news. Uh, here's the latest information with what's happening in Tokyo. And the latest information that what's happening in Tokyo with the pandemic is the rates coming down. We were going from having two and a half thousand ca new cases a day around uh, the early January. Um, the, where we're just before we went into a new state of emergency, in spite of the state of emergency really not being a state of emergency at all, there's no real restrictions on what people can do. Uh, the numbers have really dramatically come down. Um, they, they dropped below uh, a thousand uh, a day uh, just over a week ago. And they dropped below 500 during this week and they're continuing to come down every day and this is for the uh average for the seven day average you don't want to actually go day by day because you have late days on the weekend where they collect for your tests and, and you know and so you get spikes on tuesday when they start getting the results of the test from monday uh, and it goes down over the sun over sunday so you only really get a good indication from the seven day moving average but the seven day moving average is now down below 400 and it's continuing to go down each day so that's a good thing um still obviously can't wait until vaccinations come out and with that, um, the uh, Pfizer uh, vaccine uh, was officially approved last night. There's already a whole bunch of them in the country along with they require like the minus 78 degrees Celsius storage. So the um, uh, refrigerators that are necessary for that are already being distributed around the country. And uh, yeah, apparently as early as next week, uh, Tono Karo, uh, <laughs> Kono Taro, the uh, minister who, who's been put in charge of the uh, vaccination drive, is already planning from next week to start vaccinating uh, frontline medical workers. Um, and then they'll be moving to elderly. No, no plans uh, that are firm beyond that right now, but the fact that they're starting next week is sooner than expected. Um, in terms of how long it's going to take to cover, you know, a country of 127 million people and how they're going to tackle that, I do hope that they do cover Tokyo early. It makes sense that they will actually favor going, obviously, for all medical workers first and then all elderly and at-risk groups next. I think it'll be a long time before regular people um, will have access uh, to vaccines. There's no indication of the timeline yet, but there again, of course, Tokyo has the densest population and the highest rates, so it does make sense as well, as well as, you know, obviously the highest potential for being able to distribute a lot of the vaccine. Um, so I think it does make sense to focus on trying to get Tokyo uh, as many people in Tokyo vaccinated as soon as possible when it becomes possible but of course you know they still have to fly in a lot of the doses and of course there was the whole discussion from last week about the fact that you know when they thought they were uh, importing 60 million doses it turns out because of the syringes that they use that deliberately leave a little bit 20% uh, of the dose to be tossed out afterwards with the syringe it means that they only had like uh, 40 million doses um, unless they can find different syringes. Uh, also, NHK was making a big deal of, with the syringes that these were um, only, uh, only Japan uses these uh, general syringes which have this little bit of dead, they call it a dead zone within the syringe which wastes a bit of the vaccine, but apparently this problem is pretty universal. These are very common uh, multi-purpose syringes, whereas there, there are specific syringes uh, for vaccinations that don't leave, that don't waste anything. But they're just not very common in Japan and the government suddenly realized they need to get a supply and everywhere else has realized the same problem and, and locked up the supplies. So, yeah, who knows how long it's going to take, but it is it, things are moving. So that's good news. But on top of that, the fact that the, um, the, the daily cases are also coming down, it shows that even without a really tough lockdown, um, it's just not possible in Japan to really do a tough lockdown, just the way the law here works and so on. But um, it, it seems to be working. Well, I mean, it is still, you look at Australia and New Zealand, they shut down they have a couple of cases and they shut down entire cities. That's what's happening in Melbourne, Brisbane, happening in uh, my hometown of Auckland in New Zealand right now. Uh, three members of a family got it and they're shutting down the entire city of more than a million people. Um, but it's all, you know, proportions, right? They want to stay clear, basically, at zero. Uh, we're, we're far from that here, but uh, still, you know, all, all good news and good trends. So, um, yeah, that's what's happening with the pandemic right now. Coming back into the comments, let me, I, I think I saw a few people uh, target me. So yeah, target me, tag me, I should say. Theodore Sharp, what happened to the New Zealand politician that got kicked out of the meeting for not wearing a tie? I don't know a lot about that. I saw that on BBC. So I saw that um, a Maori politician in New Zealand uh, refused to wear a necktie. He was wearing a, um, I should actually know the correct term for it, but it was a uh, a, a kind of Maori cultural pendant which he was wearing instead apparently it's a rule of parliament that you have to be wearing uh, men have to wear neckties to be able to speak in parliament um, he was objecting to the rule he was kicked out of parliament he was not allowed to speak but apparently I think the speaker boat back down right now the government is one of the more liberal parties um, and it's not really a very good look for them it's generally supported by Maori people in New Zealand so it probably wasn't a good look when he, he 
when the politician in question made the point that this is discriminatory and you should be able to wear something culturally appropriate. So I think they sort of backed down on it, and fair enough. Um, it seems a bit weird in this day and age that New Zealand still requires men to wear ties. I mean, apart from all of the way that gender has become so fluid um, in terms of how it's defined and, and those sorts of old requirements. There again, when I became a lawyer in New Zealand, I had to wear the old-fashioned uh, horsehair white wigs in my admission ceremony, which actually I thought that was awesome. But New Zealand's like the last country in the whole British Commonwealth just about. They're probably maybe some Caribbean islands that still do that. But um, yeah, basically New Zealand was the last like big country that required that. Although I, that was, I kind of like that. But yeah, a bit old fashioned, I guess. New Zealand doesn't, doesn't like to change things. And that was a silly rule. Um, and you know, yeah, uh, the, the guy should be able to uh, go out, especially if it's, uh, you know, um, culturally, uh, if it's a tongue, if it's a important sort of uh, cultural uh, significance for him you should be able to wear it and in Melbourne you have the strain now you have the UK strain in Melbourne well that's inevitable it's going to get everywhere so um, yeah I know everyone's freaking out in Australia but honestly you've got, still, still got it pretty good and, and I'm sure you'll get through it all okay um, yeah yeah uh, and Jacinda Ardern I mean that's an easy win to take obviously so yes she did that Trevor, Trevor Mallard indeed did back down and made ties optional seems a bit silly indeed yeah, uh, Aaron, yeah, hell yeah, I wore a wig, you know, it's hella cool. Well, yeah, the old-fashioned, uh, you know, British court wigs. That's... So this is the thing about being a lawyer. God, I'm never going to get the show done in 40 minutes, but here we go. In America, like when you watch Law & Order or you watch TV, and I grew up watching American TV, so my idea of what a lawyer is is basically to be like these sort of, you know, movie, you know, performing great speakers. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be such a great lawyer. I'm going I'm to get, you know, Jimmy Hoffa... Well, he's, you'd have to find Jimmy Hoffa to be able to defend him successfully. Or let's say Al Capone. You know, you'd be able to get anybody, you know, off or whatever, just like um, by being an, an excellent speaker and performer in court. Um, the thinking in the Commonwealth countries, and New Zealand's kind of moving towards the American style, but basically the, the, the English philosophy on being a lawyer is, and this is very applicable in New Zealand, where New Zealand is just a country of people that hate to speak in public and are really sort of shy and self-conscious. Um, there's this idea that uh, the court cases must never be uh, the, the the lawyers and the judge must be like as close to robots as possible. They're not allowed to try to sway the um, jury or the court by being impressive in how they speak. So, for example, um, yeah, when you're speaking in court in New Zealand, uh, if you speak inter like with an interesting tone, or if you say, you know, like he was really, really dead, uh, you get cautioned by the judge and saying no. <laughs> stop being frivolous as you have to say so so you know the the subject was deceased uh you have to pull it in you're not allowed to wave your hands you're actually required when speaking and the way when i was coached to actually hold your hands behind your back you have to wear a black gown over your clothes so that basically if you're someone who can afford an expensive suit um you're not at an advantage over another lawyer who has a cheap suit um, and the, the the thing, the purpose of the wig as well is to make everybody look the same. It's to basically convert us into sort of human robots. And, and women would wear it the same as men. So basically, when you have the same white wig on women and men, and their clothes are covered up by a black gown, and they're not allowed to change the intonation of their voice or use their hands, um, there's nothing left. You're just, you're just like a dictaphone. <laughs> Uh, you still do your best within that, but but men, women, uh, you know, rich, poor, whatever, like speaking, doesn't like speaking, and it's it's it, the intention of it is to equalize. However, people have acknowledged it's dumb, <laughs> and I think they abolished it. But I was very happy that when I was made a lawyer, I got I got I got to wear the clothes, which to me I, I like that I like the uniform uh, of the profession. I spent a lot of money and time learning to become a part of, so that was pretty cool. I don't know where Jimmy Hoffer is, but uh, or do I? Or do I? focus how am i going to get through this <laughs> uh quinn rankin do, did i see the lawyer who mistakenly used a cat avatar saying yes i'm not a cat yes i saw that and uh that was that was very 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 good jason i hope japan allows uh, people that have been vaccinated and in september you're due to start study abroad then uh, indeed uh, it's certainly people are talking about the idea of uh, vaccine passports about some way of uh, tracking and recognizing people being able and allowing them to travel there's fear that it could lead to discrimination for example being able to enter restaurants or events or whatever could require evidence of having been vaccinated even domestically but of course you know particularly for travel it absolutely makes sense so um yeah yeah that's that's totally cool um and, and absolutely, that makes sense, Jason. I hope for your sake and everybody's sake that they have a system like that by September.
let's move to the next story I'm not trying to make this editable I'm going to do a, a, a fancy title I'm going to leave a little gap where they can where, where um, Aaron can drop in the title oh by the way I made I made new theme music I actually edited a track I made a hip-hop beat and then I got some big Japanese wadaiko drums which I was playing with like all fingers on my iPad and it's kind of cool it's only like four seconds long but um, I'm, I'm very satisfied with it so yeah I did a recut of the old intro and uh, check that out in the uh, weekly five minute episodes which I, I repeat of this but you know who wouldn't want to relive the moment next door oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, in other pandemic related news uh, yeah things are going so well the government feels like it's time to make it worse again so they're already planning a resumption of the go to travel and COVID spreading campaign so you all know what the COVID travel campaign is. I think I've already talked about it uh, multiple times. Uh, it all goes back to, um, you know, in Japan, like in all the other countries, uh, politicians need to fundraise in order to run elections, in order to get reelected. And the party president of the LDP party, uh, Toshiro, Toshihiro uh, Nikai, um, yeah, he, one of his uh, sponsors, you know, they're, they're like Formula One cars nowadays. They're sort of covered with corporate sponsors. Uh, he's sponsored the, the most, the, 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 party president not the prime minister but the person who's like the, the chief organizer of the LDP that's the ruling party is sponsored by the Japanese Tourist Association and uh, when COVID hit um, it was just after the elections and he thought you know what you know what would be really great for that pandemic we should have a massive tourism subsidy campaign uh, when people say how, how you know one how could you think that's a good idea and how much exactly did your sponsors donate to you it turned out they donated four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to his campaign which by global standards is not very impressive certainly not impressive enough to justify uh deliberately spreading COVID 19 throughout the country but apparently it was it, it's enough in japan so um yeah he belligerently um sort of said i mean you know before all the industries that are going that are having economic trouble apparently the government decided to empty the coffers to give everybody vouchers to go to restaurants to go traveling as if this could be a good idea you know and there are actually now university studies showing what a terrible idea this was and that it almost certainly did contribute to the nationwide spread of COVID-19 during the third wave that we are just now currently on the back end of uh, the first and second waves were only in the main cities uh, because people stayed at home but when they started giving everybody in the main cities travel vouchers to go to small towns well all of a sudden people in small towns started getting COVID-19 uh, it, it was it, it's just amazingly self-destructive and, and just the the epitome of Japanese money politics I mean seriously it is like they are trying to get fired and lose on purpose but this is what they did so yeah and even when it was raging and we we're having thousands of cases per day and about to declare another state of emergency the government was sort of like yeah well you know maybe we should put a pause on, on, on go to travel at least for people from Tokyo because all the towns even the towns that were getting money and benefiting from having tourists you know show up and paying for stuff and these remember the tourism industry has been dying because of this so there is a degree of need for it but even places that were dying were like yeah we're we're very happy for the tourists but no one from Tokyo please <laughs> uh, but the, the, in a way it's good for Tokyo as well because of course as I've pointed out before um, spreading the virus around meant that people couldn't discriminate against Tokyo so much because everybody had it we're all a big happy family give us a big hug and a sloppy kiss I think that's pretty much what uh, that's that was the upside of the go to campaign but here we are um, in the middle of a state of emergency in 10 cities and prefectures and uh, government has already the the transportation minister and Nikai have already said you know we better restart that old tourism campaign as soon as possible so you know um forty four hundred fifty thousand dollars buys you a lot of uh japanese tax uh and corruption and uh, disease uh some fatal diseases in japan so um congratulations on that and i can't believe that we are still in the middle of a state of emergency and they're talking already about resuming um such a wrong-headed campaign but welcome to japan